Hey everybody, this is Franco, and I'm just here in the garage, hanging out with uh, my cat, Winston, on a Friday night. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so, <laughs> anyway, I wanted to give you a quick update on the limit switch situation here for the Z-axis on the work B. So, as you can see, I decided to uh, take the, the x-axis apart so I could get down and underneath and work on this thing. And, you know, I, it kind of looks like a big deal, but it's really not. The way this router's put together, you can disassemble these axes you know, pretty easily. It, it's, uh, it's really not too bad. It only took me about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes to, to break this thing down. And I don't think it'll take more than 10 or 15 minutes to put it back together. So... So this was this was the right thing to do. So what happened? Let's see here if I can. I could not install this limit switch while it was assembled, and the reason is, just like every other threaded hole in these uh, aluminum anodized uh, pieces, they they don't mask the threads when they anodize, and what happens is the threaded holes get tight, and I could not. Under any circumstances, I could not get these uh, these N3 uh, screws to start. So what I had to do, I had to disassemble the thing, take it all apart. I had to get a little tiny, you know, a M3 tap and a little tiny wrench that I actually use for uh, working on my RC cars. I had to chase out these holes in this, you know, aluminum plate. So a word to the wise, if you're if you're uh, going to build a, a work B router, I would uh, make sure you do all that stuff, you know, while you're assembling it, you know, when it's easy. It's definitely a lot more difficult after the thing is put together. Then the other thing I had to do, the through holes in these, these uh, limit switches, they're just a little too small to have an M3 screw go through them. So I had to... Um, drill those out and you have to be really careful because this these switches are like it's a real hard brittle plastic so I used a 3.3 uh, millimeter drill bit nothing fancy just a 3.3 millimeter drill bit and I had to do this on my drill press if you try to do it with a hand drill you're just gonna break the switch you can't really do it by hand 3.3 uh, millimeter drill bit and the drill press and just very slowly, very carefully drill out those holes and then everything's cool and you can assemble the switch. Then naturally I had to solder some some wire to the switches or to the switch and uh, you know wind up I'm gonna fish that through these holes when I reassemble it. The wire I'm using is actually let's see if I can get a picture of it. It's, it's like security system wire. It is... Man, I cannot find the... Oh, here we go. So it's 22... Come on, focus. 22... Well, I'll read it off to you. It's, it's 22 uh, gauge wire and it's stranded. So it's two conductor, 22 gauge, stranded wire. And I buy this stuff at Home Depot. It's, you know, used for security systems and stuff like that, and they have it at Home Depot. And it's not very expensive and it works great. But you just want to make sure that you get stranded. You want the stranded wire because it's flexible, right? If you get the solid core stuff, if you get the solid core stuff, it's going to you know, it's going to break. So make sure you get the strand it. And, uh, yeah, okay, so that's about it. Not a whole lot to say. So the limit switch for the Z-axis is in place. The other limit switches are super easy to install. They just mount in these extrusions. And I'll do another video where I talk about that. And, uh, of course, I'll be talking about uh, 
connecting this stuff to the centroid acorn and making all that work. And uh, yeah, okay. Well, all right. Well, thanks for watching. And I will catch you all later.